Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to focus on the installation of Cisco UCCX server. Now, before we do the installation, there are some pre-installation tasks that we need to look at. There are a number of prerequisites that you need to complete in order to install UCCX. First of all, the DNS server must have the appropriate record for your UCCX server. So you need to configure a record for your DNS as well as a PTR record. Now, if you fail to create a PTR record, then it will fail, the installation will fail because during the installation, it does do a, a check on the DNS, reverse IP check on the domain, uh, on the IP address. You also need an NTP server address, which should be configured. Now, uh, most uh, Cisco UC collaboration platform uh, is uh, mandatory to have an NTP. Now, in addition to that, you need to know the IP address of your call manager, publisher, or subscriber that you would like to uh, register with. You need to create or use an existing user account with an AXL privilege, and then of course create an end user account. Now the end user account will be used by uh, the administrator for day-to-day -day administration. Now if you are deploying for production, you're going to need a license file, but if you're doing this for lab or training environment, then you can work with the, what we call the NFR license kit. Now credential, there are several sets of credential that you need. Uh, one is the application credential used for administration task purpose. UCCX comes with a local admin account if you are if you have installed us our server. You also need a platform administration for the OS administration, such as uh, changing the operating system settings, certificates, TFTP server management, etc. You have security credential, which is used for inter-server communications, basically the password to access the database. And then, of course, you will, have, you will have certificates that needs to be installed as well. So during the installation, you could deploy the first uh, UCCX in a cluster, uh, primary node or secondary node. If it is a primary node, then you must say that this is the first node. Um, again, if you are deploying the secondary node, there is a little slight procedures we have to follow. Uh, we will I'll show you that how to deploy your redundant server later in the video. And then for credentials, you make sure you know your password for first node if you want to deploy the secondary node, otherwise you, it won't work. Another thing you need in order for the secondary node to be installed is that you must log into your first node, add the server's host name in your primary server, secondary host name on the primary. AXL account is simply an administrative account uh, from call manager with an AXL privilege. Uh, you can either use the admin account of the call manager to do that, but not recommended. Uh, or you can create a new account with standard AXL API access. You should always create a unique AXL user so that it is, uh, in, some, in, in case there's a compromise, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the admin account. All right, so let's go and show you how to create an AXL account first, and then we're going to do the installation. Show you, I'm going to show you the installation of the UCCX two way. One is a manual by manually configure the virtual machines uh, and uh, deploy uh, inst perform the installation. I am not going to um, show you the deployment of the OVF template. That's pretty straightforward. You can Google it. There are many different uh, options available to show you how to deploy the OVF template. Providing that your OVF templates are deployed, we're going to deploy one server as a manual, and then I'm going to show you how to build a cluster using Cisco Prime Collaboration Deployment. So right now you see behind me is a call manager. So I'm going to increase the font size a little bit. And then I have my VMware and right about here, I got pod number six. I have a virtual machine called Cisco Unified Contact Center Express. I will go to the properties of that and what we're going to do, we're going to associate the ISO file or the CD-ROM, whichever you have. So I'm going to go to data store. So we're going to choose this bootable 12.5x CD-ROM uh, ISO, we're going to connect and we're going to make sure that is connect on power on as well. Now, before I do, before I power on the server, remember the DNS is, is a mandatory. So I'm, I'm going to log into uh, DNS server. Let me turn on one, another DNS server right here. What I'm going to show you the DNS on another pod uh, currently not available here. So this is my DNS server. 
And what I'm looking at is that I must have my domain name that I'm going to use. So vbcpody.com. As you can see, I have a domain name right there. And then I need a, a, a host name, HQUCCX. Now I have two server, primary node and a secondary node. So I'm gonna create one entry called HQUCCX with the IP address 142.12.64.24. Make sure the PTR record is say uh, check. However, by checking this is not going to work. You're gonna have, you have to make sure that you do have a reverse zone lookup. If you're not familiar with the reverse zone lookup, please take a look at a video that is, uh, there are many videos available on YouTube, how to create zone in Microsoft DNS server, as well as reverse zone. So here we're gonna assume that you have that. So if you look at the IP address dot 24, it is pointing to the reverse hqucx dot vbc part two dot com. How do I know if my PTR record is not working or not? Well, you can go to command prompt and I'm gonna do a ping. A reverse ping ping a I'm going to say 142.12.64.24 when I do ping space dash a space IP address of the server what's going to supposed to do is going to return the host name and as you can see it returned the host name and that tells me that my uh, PTR record is working fine if the PTR record did not exist it will basically show you the IP address only so therefore uh, in our case, UCCX installation will fail. So make sure you do that. Now I do have a secondary server, IP address 34. When I do a reverse ping, it will give me the host name for the secondary. Now secondary, I'm using HQUCCXS, S standing for secondary. Again, these are my naming convention. Uh, you can choose any name that you prefer for your organizations. That's all you need from a DNS perspective. Of course, you need to make sure that server can reach the DNS. So right now I am going to be on my pod number six. I'm going to turn this machine on. And as I turn this on, I have it basically like uh, installing any uh, collaboration or even Linux based server, very similar. So let's wait for it. All right, so it's going to give me disk found because of the ISO. Do you want to do a test on the disk? Well, nowadays we don't use uh, physical CD-ROM, so we don't really have to worry about scratch on the media file because we're using all ISO. So I'm just going to go and skip this option. It is going to detect the hardware, and if it realizes that the hardware that you're running on is not running on is not supported, it might give you a warning error, error message. So this is the product I'm going to install. So I'm going to click OK. And it's telling me that right now there are version on the hard drive is none because there's nothing in there. And version on the DVD, which is ISO file, has the 12.5 version. So I'm going to proceed with that. Proceed with the wizard. And I'm going to say no to upgrade and I'm going to click on basic installation. This is very important. You must make sure that your end, your time zone is configured. Um, most of my servers are in a Pacific time zone, although I'm currently in a, a Eastern time zone, but I always deploy my server in Pacific. Just try to follow Cisco's labs. And I'm going to click continue or negotiation, empty your size, unless you have an absolute uh, necessary to change that, I would just keep it default. When do you need to change that? Usually when you're dealing with like a jumbo frame or OSPF, you may need to tweak this a little bit, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to leave it as it is. Host name, HQUCCX, IP address. This is part six, 24. So you provide your IP address mask, subnet mask, and default gateway. Make sure default gateway is reachable because if it is not, the installation will fail. All right, so primary DNS, this is my DNS server. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna provide the domain name. So I got the DNS server and the domain name. If the DNS server is not reachable, installation will fail or halt. If the domain name is not configured, if the DNS server is reachable, but the domain name is configured, is not configured, the installation will be halt as well. So we're gonna make sure that those things exist. Here you define your administrator username and whatever the password you prefer to use for your organization. Now this is the platform op, uh, username, not for the web, UCCX web admin. This is the platform, the operating system. 
And often for more uh, proper deployment is to use different username for operating system and different username for web uh, web-based administration. This is very important. This is your certificate, uh, training, location. Now I have a Las Vegas office, not for gambling purpose. I just have an office there and United States. All right, is this your first node? Yes, it is. NTP server, this is my NTP server. Make sure it's reachable, otherwise it will fail. Uh, this is the database password so that when you have a secondary node, it's gonna ask you for that this particular password. So make sure you do remember that. SMTP, if you want to use SMTP mail server, make sure that you do have a mail server configured. Right now we don't, so I'm just going to say no. And this is the username for the web administration. So I'm gonna, I, I like, I'm gonna keep it the same for simplicity. All right, platform configuration is done and you click okay and installation will start just like any other call uh, collaboration application. If everything goes fine, installation can take anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your server platform and uh, utilization of your uh, underlying uh, operating system. All right, so now you have seen how to install UCCX on a single virtual machine. I'm gonna show you how to use something called prime collaboration deployment to deploy a cluster with without you manual intervention. So UCCX, the way it works is that you install the primary first, the system will pause. You'll have to go to the primary server, add the secondary node. For some reason, it doesn't do it automatically, and I'll show you uh, why. And then you come back to the prime and you install, you, you click, you say continue, and it will continue with the secondary installation. Right now, I'm gonna use pod number seven, and in pod seven, I got two call manager, uh, UCCX server, primary, and then I secondary. Two virtual machine created, but they're not installed. They're empty, they're fresh, and I, even, I, I haven't even turned them on yet. It is important that you do not turn this virtual machine from uh, the moment you create them. We're gonna go to Prime Collaboration. And in the Prime Collaboration, what we will do, we will create a cluster for UCCX, for, for pod number seven. So here you go to, uh, Administr uh, inventory, you go to cluster. Now I already have my ESXi server in, uh, registered here, so I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna define a new cluster and I'm gonna call this pod seven UCCX cluster. Now you have to make sure that pod seven has uh, DNS settings configured, so let's verify that. The reason why I didn't do in part six because I don't have Active Directory configured part six properly, so I'll have to wait until I finish that. That's why I did not uh, turn on the installation because I know it's gonna fail, right? So this is my part seven Active Directory. Come on. And we're gonna go directly to our uh, DNS manager. So under administrative tools, click on DNS manager. Here you'll see part seven with all the host, you got the reverse DNS, as you can see, and I can see pod seven do have the UCCX, but different naming. It's very important you know the name. So what I'll do, I will delete that. And here, I'm going to look for UCCX. Well, it does have UCCXP and UCCXC. So I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna use that, that's fine. Uh, it is using different IP address, uh, 142.17.65.24, which is perfectly fine because your, your secondary node could be in different subnet, nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we'll keep that as it is. Uh, but because I deleted this PTR record, what I'll do, I will uncheck it, apply, check and apply again. So it will recreate those entries. All right, so now if I go back to my reverse, I should refresh this. I should have my 24 back. I should have my 34 somewhere. 
Okay, so 34, oh, sorry, because it's a different subnet, 165. So I have to go to the 65. And if I refresh this, and you will see 65.24, yeah, right there. So the last digit is the same, 24 for both, but the third octet is different. One is 64, one is 65. Okay, so we got the DNS part ready. Uh, now I'm gonna create a UCCX cluster. We're going to say, uh, add a node. So in order, of, when you click on add node, what happened is the PC, PCD or prime collaboration server is gonna go to my ESXi and it's gonna load all these virtual machine. And it's gonna give you an option, hey, which virtual machine do you want me to use to install whatever you want me to install? So we're going to click on add and see is retrieving the virtual machine from that host. It might take a little time, so be patient. Okay, so there, sometimes it may take a long time because depending on how many ESXi server you have, because it's gonna go through all the servers and list, it, list all the possible virtual machines that you have. So if you have a small environment, shouldn't take that long. Uh, now I'm going to do, uh, put the host name, UCCXP. P is the primary server. IP address 24 and the gateway. Now if you have a NAT IP, then you, you may wanna put that in here, but we're not gonna worry about that this moment. The product, we're going to use Cisco Unified Contact Center Express. It's going to be the primary UCCX server and it's going to be the publisher. Now you can put a note, my first UCCX installation. And now here you're going to see all the virtual machines that you have in the list. So what I usually do, I do a search for part seven. It will filter it. And then you can look for UCCX from that filter. So as you can see, I got my primary and then I have my secondary. So I will select the primary virtual machine. So basically I'm telling the PCD or prime collaboration that, hey, use that virtual machine to install this application. Okay. Now I have the primary, I'm gonna add the secondary. Okay, so same procedure, you're going to put the secondary server, UCCXS, and the IP address. So this is gonna be site B, or secondary node. Now this is going to be secondary, so we don't need the pub. As, as you notice, when I select the secondary UCCX, the publisher is not checked, uh, I cannot check that. So my secondary server, UCCX server. So this is gonna be the secondary virtual machine. Click okay. So both my primary and secondary servers are there. I will click next. And this is where I'm gonna provide all the username and the password, uh, certificate information, everything that manual installation asks you to do. Again, uh, for production, you wanna keep these two usernames separate. Okay. So assign the DNS, so I'm gonna select both. This is your domain name. If you have a secondary DNS server, which most company you probably will have, you can make sure you can provide that information here. Your NTP. MTU size, I'm not going to change that. Time zone, I will change it to Los Angeles. And apply. All right, so I have my cluster build. Now I'm ready to do the installation. So when do you wanna do installation? Well, that depends on you, uh, your company. So you can go to uh, task and you click on install and you can set up an install to do it at 2, 2 a.m. in the morning, uh, on Saturday or whatever works for you, right? So I'm gonna click on new task and I'm going to say install pod 7 UCCX cluster. 
it's going to ask me to select the install so i'm going to choose port 7 and ucc xp primary and secondary and again if you don't want to install both at the same time it's up to you perfectly fine soft uh, iso file now this iso file has to be uploaded into the pcd i'm going to choose uh, the bootable uccx click next and schedule so you can spell you can schedule in a specific day of the week month or even time or you can say manually start so i'm going to say immediately after the completion of this wizard now sequence you can specify the sequence right here and if you click on insert steps Sorry. You can click on insert steps. I think uh, doesn't allow you to do that. So the step details is going to install the primary first, followed by the secondary. So click next. You can see the step one and step two. You can put a little note there and you click on finish give you a little warning and the task has been processed so what's going to happen is it's going to take about a couple of maybe a 30 seconds to 50 seconds maybe an hour minute it's going to start the virtual machine and start installing it for you and you can always uh, val verify that so it's done The task will be stopped if an error occur. Okay, that's fine. It, you can say that. What happened here? Okay, so maybe refresh it. Okay, so it's, it started. You can take a look at the log and see if there's anything starting the installation okay it may take two hours is telling you now if you go to the virtual machine and you see the primary server is has already started so now all you have to do is wait for it now i'll show you uh one other thing about prime collaboration i don't know why i keep doing that now i have tried to install the pod 2 and what happened is it installed in a bit in in the middle give me that server installation as pause. And when I go to that virtual machine in part two, you'll see that I have my primary UCCX server successfully installed, successfully installed, but the secondary UCCX server is complaining that configuration validation failed. And this is the reason why it failed because on the primary server i don't have the host name of secondary server so that's the part i will have to configure in order to continue these steps now i'm not going to do that right now um, i will do that in a separate video to show you how that is done all right so that's how installation is done and uh, once the installation is complete you are ready to get started with the next step of your configuration all right so hopefully that's uh, you got an idea how to get started with the installation and deployment I will see you in the next video.